got a small range of hooks. I mean, there's hooks, 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 hooks on the marketplace. To me, what I'm looking for in a hook is for it to turn, and most importantly, is to stay put in the fish's mouth. You see a lot of hooks now that develop the sharper and sharper hooks. And the problem is, is that the points have got longer and longer and thinner and thinner. And what happens is when the fish, when the hook is actually in the fish's mouth, they start to tear. As you're playing these fish, the work in action will actually start to cut the fish's mouth. And you see lots of people with fish falling off. Oh, why has that happened? Why has this happened? Nine times out of ten, people are using too short hook links and too sharper hooks or too finer hooks, and it just tears the hook out, just pulls it away. So what I'm looking for in a hook is strength, but with a nice short point. All our three ranges have got that in common. From the barb to the point is minimal. Sharp, yes. Long points, not for me. A new pattern that we've brought to the range is the Grenville Claw. Just a little bit different shape, and for some reason, I've used it for the last two years nearly now, that hook does not move in the fish's mouth. I'm hooking them on the flat of the mouth, sometimes in the top of the mouth, depending how the fish are feeding, but that hook is not tearing. Once it goes in, it seems to just stay exactly where you nail them. And to me, that is the mark of a very good hook. Don't get me wrong, I've used the long shanks and our wide gapes for 10, 15 years. I've used these patterns and caught hundreds and hundreds of big fish all over Europe. Still use them, still like them in certain situations. But over the last two years, I've been using this Grenville claw and to me that seems to be fitting all the bills. I just really use it on this multi-rig. I use uh, atomic jelly wire as a hook link, 25 pound, superb stuff. I'd like to say it was ours but it's not, it's atomic, some fair play to them. You know, I, I don't mind using anybody's products if they're good, that's, you know, part of the game as far as I'm concerned. But that affixed to our Grenville claw. Again, just a simple loop, comes through the lead and attaches the hook. It's as easy as that, just a loop. You can change the rig, you can change your hook if it does get blunted when you get a fish. Just thread that back on. I just use a small ring. If you can see that, if we just put that on there, it's just a small ring. Difficult to see. Which again is just attached to a small loop of line. That goes on the rig. Again, we should do some close-ups of these in a minute so we can just see exactly where that goes together. But you can see that that just loops over the hook, pulls onto there, boily on there. Obviously I've had a, a pop-up, a cork ball pop-up on there, the cork ball's still on there, but it just shows you exactly how the mechanics of the rig work. The beauty of it is and I'm sure that this is the main reason that this rig works so well for me anyway, is that once you've hooked the fish, the bait pulls down and away from the bend of the hook. You see a lot of people with tubing 
or a bit of tube with the bait tight to the bend of the hook there. And I'm sure that that forces the hook out. People lose quite a lot of fish. They just fall off. But I'm sure that the pressure of that boilie on there, just moving about in the fish's mouth, pushes the hook out. With this rig, it pulls it back down, tight to that knot, away from the bend of the hook, and it gives you really good hooking properties. We put this big split shot on there, which overweights it. I personally use this rig with bottom baits, pop-ups, semi-buoyant, whatever. But that big shot on there, that just turns that hook, and so you're catching it right in the bottom of the mouth. Not always at the front, because of the mechanics of the rig, sometimes they're hooked further back. But nine times out of 10, when, when that hook goes in, you get them in. Just to enhance the range a bit, what we've done, I've uh, produced these new hook boxes, individual uh, slots in a, in a soft rubber housing. They just hold the hooks in position so that the points of the hook are not getting damaged. Some people are going through the stage of, of what I call over sharpening. Um, again, something that I don't do. If the hooks aren't sharp enough, don't buy that pattern, basically, is my, my uh, philosophy. I have no problem at all with the hooks that we use. And it's just a simple slide lid. lid. I can't even say lid. <laughs> Ever know, it's fixed now the mouth don't work. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just a simple box, but very effective again. It's just individually holding each hook separate so you're not getting any damage. Just another little thing that we've got just uh, while we're on the hook, hook range. It's our kicker clip. Basically what it does is quite a lot of people use um, soft tubing just to give you that little kick. Basically what happens if you put that away into your rod sleeve, you tighten that up, put that hook into, your, into the eye, it straightens out your tubing. With this little clip, you just push the hook into the fold slot it in and then that hooks onto the eye of your rod keeping everything safe it also stops the hook digging into your bag getting caught up it just makes things perfectly safe 